Meanwhile, one of the federal judge, uh, federal judge Brett Kavanaugh's accusers back in the spotlight, Christine Blasey Ford's allegations set off a firestorm during his confirmation process. But according to a new book, her attorney says Ford was partly motivated to come forward in order to try and undermine Kavanaugh on any future abortion cases. Let's bring in Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox News senior judicial analyst and host of The Liberty File on Fox Nation. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, guys. So Pleasure. She's, she's back. Well, look, this, this statement that is attributed to her lawyer, and there's a tape of the statement, there's no question, but the lawyer said it, appears to be a violation of the attorney-client privilege. She's apparently revealing what was in her client's brain at the time the client was communicating with her, mm -hmm. and these communications are not supposed to be revealed. Well, that's one way to look at it. The other is, why would she be saying this now? And do we care what the motivation was mm -hmm for her uh, allegations against uh, now Justice Kavanaugh. Look, we all watch this. She was a credible witness. He was a very credible witness. Neither of them changed anybody's mind, apparently, and he was confirmed. So did she make these allegations because they really happened and she believed he wasn't worthy of a seat in the Supreme Court? Or did she make these allegations because she believed he was going to get on the court and she wanted to undermine his credibility in some future yeah, vote in her mind against Roe next, versus yeah. Wade? It was Deborah Katz, the attorney for Blasey Ford, right. at that point. He will always have an asterisk next to his name. When he takes a scalpel to Roe v. Wade, we will know who he is, we know his character, and we know what motivates him. And that is important. It is important that we know, and that was part of what motivated Christine. This is a very prominent and well-respected lawyer with very defined political views, and I'm quite surprised that she would talk about the motivations what of about her attorney client. client privilege? Listen, if, if something comes out that is protected by the attorney client privilege, that information can't, cannot, cannot be used against the client. Now, what's the worst case scenario here? Did she make this whole story up? That would be perjury and probably conspiracy because others might have been involved. Does the Justice Department want to investigate this? Or is this just a lawyer saying, you know, we, we lost this, he's on the court, we don't like All him. All we can do is rely on her own words Correct. and that, those of her attorney. But here she was on that day back in September 27th, 2018. Until July 2018, I had never named Mr. Kavanaugh as my attacker outside of therapy. This changed in early July 2018. I saw press reports stating that Brett Kavanaugh was on the short list of a list of very well qualified Supreme Court nominees. I thought it was my civic duty to relay the information I had about Mr. Kavanaugh's conduct. I remember you sitting here watching that. Yes, we watched us. it. We watched it together, and I looked at you and said, she's very credible, and I looked at you five hours later and said, he's very credible with that forceful, right. uh, forceful denial. So one way to look at this is, do we care what her motivation was now because it's history? He has this lifetime position on the court, and the people that hate him are going to hate him no matter what he does. Or was there some unlawful behavior here, like lying or misleading uh, under oath that the DOJ should be concerned about? And why would that come out of the mouth of that woman's lawyer, who, who was her protector and her so, representative? Uh, all good questions on that. Tara, watch list. The judge rules it violates the constitutional rights of those who are listed on that. You believe this is profound? I do wow. believe this is profound, because the FBI has put 1,100,000 names on the terror watch list. You're on that list. You can't get on a plane without a material disruption. What's a material disruption? How about 10 hours held in a holding cell while the TSA interrogates you? These are American citizens. You can't go into certain hospitals. You can't go into certain schools. You can't even get onto certain trains. You don't even know your name is on the list. Judge said, wait a minute. You're going to interfere with people's right to travel. You got to tell them. You got to challenge them. You got to prove the case. You can't do it on the basis of un uncharged allegations and rumor and innuendo. He hasn't decided what the remedy is yet. He hasn't stopped the FBI from doing this yet, but that's the next step, which will probably come in a few weeks. Innocent people should be beyond the reach of the watch list system. We think that's what the Constitution requires. It's exactly what this uh, judge said. I believe it's a mainstream decision, even though at the moment it's very frustrating to the FBI.
Pleasure, Paul Tana. Pleasure, guys. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you. It's been a while. Yes, it has been a while. Good to Good see, see you back Thank north. You, yeah, Thank he's you. back. Young They're Hammer. both back. Where's that baseball cap you were wearing all week? <laughs> I've got one for you, okay? <laughs> okay. Happy September. <laughs>